Welcome back. In today's video, we want to determine the impedances of the following elements. So the impedance of a circuit element is the phase or voltage across that element divided by the current, the phasor current through that element. The unit for impedance is ohms. So for a resistor, the VI relationship is V equals I times R. Thus, the expression that relates the instantaneous time function to the phasor component is the expression X of T, X of T is arbitrary, equals the real part of the phasor component X times the complex exponential e to the j omega t. x here is our phasor component. x is equal to the magnitude of x times e to the j phi. So we can then, because, because x is arbitrary, x can take on current and voltage. So we can then go ahead the real part of the phasor component times the complex exponential e to the j omega t is equal to the real part of the phasor component times the complex exponential e to the j omega t times r. We can then go ahead, factor that, then we get the real part, in parentheses, the voltage across the phasor voltage across the resistor minus R times the phasor current through that resistor times the complex exponential e to the j omega t, in parentheses, equal to zero. However, the complex exponential e to the j phi cannot equal zero, thus, cannot equal zero. Thus, the phasor voltage across that resistor minus R times that the phasor current through that resistor is equal to zero. Solving for R, or solving for R basically, but remember that the impedance is V over I. So if we set V over I, We're left with R on the right, and thus the impedance for the resistor is R, and that's in ohms. So basically, the impedance for the resistor is real and is not dependent on frequency. So thus, the answer to A is that the impedance is one kilo ohms. So that's A. We can then go ahead and move to, so and by the way, a resistor's impedance is ex ex entirely real and the VI relationship is the same in the phasor or time domain. So for the inductor, in the time domain, the relationship between the voltage across the inductor and the current through the inductor is V of T equal to the to the L, which is the inductance, times the differential of I of T. So we can do the same thing again and represent our voltage and our current by our expression earlier. However, this time we're differentiating our current. So let's do that. And if we differentiate current, so current is I of T equal to the real part of our phasor component counterpart of I of T times the complex exponential E to the J omega T. If we differentiate that, then we end up with 
the real part when you differentiate a complex exponential or an exponential we times the exponential by the expression in the in the exponent that does not include the variable at which we're taking the derivative so we times that by j omega and we rewrite our complex exponential so that is our current our when we that is our current when we take the derivative so now we can go ahead and set the voltage equal to so set the voltage so v of t we can skip that for the real part of the phasor voltage the phasor counterpart of v of t equals the times the complex exponential e j omega t e to the j omega t equals l times the derivative of the current so that's the real part of j omega times the phasor counterpart of i of t times the complex exponential e to the j omega t in your head you can go ahead and do it like this it doesn't matter but at the end of the day you end up with the phasor voltage across that inductor times the inductance times j omega and the phasor current through that inductor so thus the impedance of the inductor is equal to the phasor voltage and the phasor current which is then equal to j omega l so thus our inductor our impedance for the inductor is equal to we have frequency and we know that omega is in radians per second angular frequency is 2 pi times f so thus j 2 pi and f for a for an inductor i think is in megahertz so 1 megahertz you can write that as e to the 6 1 megahertz times l which is 30 micro henry so that times 30 micro henry so that's e to the negative 6 and we end up with j times 1 188.5 ohms you should just probably put the l so the impedance for the inductor is j 188.5 ohms so the phasor domain so in the phasor domain an inductor behaves like a short circuit at dc and like an open circuit at very high frequency and this is because the impedance not saying the impe well the impedance depends on what frequency that current or voltage is at so the more frequency the more impedance the less frequency the less the impedance so as always the the impedance for the inductor is positive and imaginary so that's important to know the impedance for the inductor is l and we can go ahead and do the capacitor so the capacitor is 50 microfarads at 1 kilohertz so in the time domain the current for the capacitor relates to the voltage across the capacitor by the equation we have here so as always we know our expression Ex so let's just do that we're taking the we're integrating because we have current already here we have current but to get our voltage we have to integrate to cancel what we have here so we can then go ahead integrate our voltage well basically what we're doing is integrating the entire expression so that means when we integrate i of t we end up with the real part of the phasor counterpart times the complex exponential 
e to the j omega t divided by j omega. Now we can put those together. So now we can say that the left side of our expression is going to equal to the phasor counterpart of I of t divided by j omega times the complex exponential j omega t equals to c. When we take the derivative, that goes away. So at the right of that, we end up with the phasor counterpart of v of t, which is equal to the phasor counterpart of v of t times the complex exponential e to the j omega t. As always, you can look at it like this. We go ahead and simplify that. We end up with the, an, an impedance of 1 divided by j omega c. This is purely imaginary, but you can also write that as negative j divided by omega c, which for a capacitor, the impedance is purely imaginary and negative. So the impedance for the capacitor is equal to negative j 1 over 2 pi. And what was that again? That was 1 kilohertz, e to the 3. And that's time 50, 50 microfarads. 50 microfarads so we end up with an impedance of negative j 3.18 ohms so the impedance for the capacitor is negative j 3.18 ohms and that's negative and purely imaginary so that's it for today's video. See you in the next one. Bye.